let's say I have diabetes, Alzheimer's, or whatever, you know, I can't be saved. Are you, could, are you gonna put me in ice or liquid nitrogen so that you can return me to life when uh, medicine has uh, passed enough? Yeah, so a little bit about, a little bit about cryonics, because that's what I do right now. It's really a very small part of transhumanism. It's not, it doesn't even have to be part of transhumanism, but uh, the goal is not to die in the first place. The goal is to keep living, because life is good, having new experiences, learning new things, that's all good. But sometimes things don't work out very well. You get an incurable disease, you get hit by a truck, uh, old age gets you. So what do you do at that point? Well, my answer is that the sensible thing to do is not to shove you into a big oven and incinerate you. Well, it's not very good after that. Uh, sticking you in the ground, getting munched on by bacteria and worms, not very much chance of you coming back from that. However, if you get cryopreserved, I think there's a pretty good chance, especially under good conditions. So the basic idea of cryonics is that it's not something you want to do. I do not like the idea of sitting in a vat of liquid nitrogen. That doesn't appeal to me, but it's better than the alternative. We say it's the second worst thing that can happen to you. So first of all, stay healthy, stay alive. But if that fails, what we're gonna do is you make arrangements in advance. We'll send a team out to wherever you are, and at your bedside, as soon as the, the doctor declares you to be clinically dead or legally dead, which is a very vague thing. It's like they're drawing a line where there is no line. There's this whole fuzzy area. Uh, but we have to wait for that point. We can then transfer you to the ice bath, start external cooling, uh, use about 16 or 17 different medications to protect the cells. Actually, the early stages are very much like what's done in organ donation, because you've got to keep it, take an organ out and a kidney or a heart and move it across the country, keep it viable and fresh for as long as possible. So it's a lot like that to start with. But then we'll take you to our facility, remove your blood and body fluids, including the interstitial fluids, the fluids inside the cells, and gradually replace that with a cryoprotectant solution of increasing concentration. The cryoprotectant you can think of as a sort of medical grade antifreeze. A bit like putting it in your car, but made for human beings and tested on biological materials. So this is basically like a treatment for a terminal condition? Yeah, it's really, you can think of it as putting someone in a coma, except it's a very deep coma, it's an am ametabolic coma. 50 years. We're going down to, you know, minus 196 degrees C here. It's not your fridge, it's not your icebox here, but minus 20, because it's minus 196. So anything below about minus 110, 120, you're essentially turning into a true solid and there's no more metabolic activity whatsoever. So this problem you have, you know, the faulty heart, cancer, whatever it is, aging, once we put you in, into liquid nitrogen, it doesn't matter whether it's a day or 50 years or 100 years, really there's no difference, you won't change. You can sit there and wait for technology to catch up. So it's kind of a form of medical time travel, if you like. Uh, just as if someone right now keeled over and stopped breathing, um, we would rush them from one place to another, a hospital or a clinic or, or an ambulance, where they have the technology and the skills to revive the person. Cryonics is kind of like that, except we're taking them from today to the future, where they have that kind of capability. So you're basically, uh, I mean, you're sending your problems to the future, <laughs> or future <laughs> generations to solve? Well, oh my what we do is we, uh, we're not really sending to the future, because we're not expecting, this is one of the common misconceptions. People say, well, what, why would the future bring these people back? No, what they're not understanding is that we, as an organization, will bring them back. We, you know, as long as there's customers, I guess. Yeah, I, I have friends already who are cryo reserve, um, and relatives who are signed up, so we would do this personally. So we're not depending on society to do it. We have the resources we put aside, we invest that money uh, for it to be there, and that should actually grow quite a lot over the, the decades through compound interest. So we don't need society to bring people back. Uh, and I think any society that does bring us back, or any, any society we return to, will be a pretty good one. Because if you think about it, if we screw things up completely and we have a Mad Max future or any of these dystopias, that's not a world that's gonna bring cryonics patients back. It won't have the means or the desire. So any world that you do return to is probably one worth living in. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a good world because I think over time, life gets better and better and better and better. If you ask me, would you rather live 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, well, no. Let's see, do I want to live in a time when we had no anesthesia? So you gotta pull my tooth out and there's nothing to do about the pain or I get an infection, there's no antibiotics, no thanks. Do I want to go back to a time when there's slavery, when women had no rights? No. So I think, you know, we have these ups and downs, but I think generally we, we keep creating problems, true, but we solve more problems than we create. Our lives get better, we live longer, we're healthier, we have more choices. And I think that actually is accelerating, not just on a technological level, but on a social level. I still kind of marvel at the, at the change in society. You think about the states of gay people, for instance, um, if you think about other historical changes, they took centuries. But the acceptance of gay people and now transgender people, I mean, in 
America, we got you know, a very famous judge interview on, on reality TV shows all the time. That was inconceivable just a few years ago. So that rate of change socially seems to be accelerating too. 